Hello everybody, it's been a while but we are back in Unity. Today we're going to talk about UIs. Now there are a lot of tutorials on UI out there, and Unity tutorials in specific. Uh, there are a lot of people who can tell you how to make sure to arrange your layout so that it reacts correctly to screen resize, and how to set up the buttons so that they do the right thing when you click on them and all that stuff. But surprisingly there are very few people who talk about a really critical part of UI, and that is interactive lists. Now if you watch my channel, you're probably into either Minecraft or Space Engineers. And if that's the case, then lists are really critical, because you are all about the lists. And um, there's not really any good tutorials on that. So we're going to cover how to create a list, how to make it adaptive, how to make it do the right things when you click on it, and how to make it integrate with your basic project and not have to duplicate too much code and do some annoying stuff. Right? So just to get us started, I have created five inventory items. And you can see that they are very basic, display name, description, and sprite. In the textures, I've gone ahead and inherited some textures, some CC0 textures from um, Jetril. Uh, they're CC0, so anyone can use them for any purpose. And I am going to go ahead and use them for inventory items. Maybe I will go ahead and create more, maybe not. Either way, we need to put these inventory items in a list, and I think that the easiest way to start creating a list is to just manually create it. You don't want to start to abstract. So generally speaking, you want to start with a panel. Uh, this is actually a panel on top of a panel, but the reason for that is because we're going to go ahead and resize it, see, like this. And you can also type stuff here. So whatever makes you happy, go ahead and use all of these elements. I use them all kind of arbitrarily. Uh, I would never try and drag this to get 10 pixels. I would always just type 10. Uh, being very familiar with the interface is good, but it's not critical. Uh, in this case, we are not going for the uh, beautiful layout. We are going for the functional layout. So once again, if you have questions on how to do these basic things, you need to watch another tutorial. If enough people ask me, I can put it out. I can put out a basic tutorial on Unity UI. I can't imagine many people are going to ask me that because there are a lot of really good ones. Anyway, we are going to add a component. We are going to add a vertical layout group. Now what that is, is it's a column. So we've just turned this panel into a column, and you can see that pretty easily if we add some buttons. See, add a button, and then we copy and paste the button, paste the button, paste the button. And so you can see that this vertical element group just kind of fills it up with buttons. Let's go ahead and delete the buttons. We don't want the buttons, but we would like to have another panel. I always just default to panels. So you can see that our panel, uh, this is going to be our inventory item, and it's like stretched all the way up and down. We, we don't want that to be stretched. So what we need to do is you need to add a layout element. Now this is, again, stuff that you may or may not have heard about when you were doing your static layouts. But basically, these allow us to specify how tall we want this to be. And, uh, and then we can go up to the panel and we can say, well, can you stop stretching that? It's really obnoxious. Don't stretch it. And we might as well go ahead and add in some padding so that it looks right. And now if we duplicate this panel, you can see that we get a much nicer list. And you can imagine this being our inventory items. You won't have to imagine. Let's go ahead and make it our inventory item. So in order for this to be our inventory item, what we're going to want to do is we're going to put in a sprite. And we're also going to want to put in some text. And we're going to go ahead and make the text full size here, and then we're going to adjust it just so that it's visible and easy to see. Uh, we might as well drag this over, and then this image, we'll want to move it to the left and scale it down. Um, I think I made this 30 high, so maybe 28 by 28 is a good number. 30 might be too small if we're going to be using uh, if we're going to be using colors. I oh, sorry, uh, sprites. Uh, we can always adjust it later, though. Let's go ahead and make it 32 by 32 here, uh, and it'll be a little bit larger than the than the field is. Uh, um, might as well left orient it. There we are. And then you can always put on auto fill. Uh, where is the auto fill? Best fit. There it is. And that'll make the text roughly the right color. I also don't know why they choose gray. I always just set it to black. But again, those are just aesthetics. How are we going to make this actually display our inventory items? Well, this is the key to creating lists. Now, a lot of people, especially beginners, when they create their inventory item or block type or module or whatever, they make the mistake of thinking that they are going to be displaying it with the same thing that they're creating it in. 
So in their inventory item script, they might actually have a uh, a lot of details here, like a text box, or you know you can put a, a text box in, or or a, a sprite in, or something like that, or an image in, or something like that, and then you'll have it like try and control what it shows on the screen. That's not a very good approach because it's not very flexible. The best thing to do is to create another class, which we'll call an inventory item display. Now the inventory item display is a much better thing to do. It does not, uh, you do not specify an individual inventory item display for each item. Um, there won't be a dagger inventory item display and, a, and an armor inventory item display. There's just going to be an inventory item display that accepts any inventory item. The reason it's a class is because we're actually going to have a lot of different displays. We're going to have one for when it's in the big inventory list, and one when it's in your hot bar, and one when you're looking at it in a store, and all of that stuff can be driven off of the same code. You don't have to keep making complicated stuff to wire that all together. So this is a super basic, very, very straightforward way to make all of your stuff really easy and adaptive. Uh, the, the key to game development, in my mind, uh, is to keep your game from getting so complex that you can't figure out how to do anything more. And the easiest way to do that with lists is to make sure that the stuff that displays is not uh, even vaguely related to the stuff that actually contains data. So we're obviously going to need uh, to add in the UI namespace. UI. Got a new keyboard, so I'm even more fat fingered than usual. That UI and namespace will allow us to talk about the items uh, that are part of the UI. For example, a text box. And we're going to call this name uh, text name. And then we're going to have public uh, image um, sprite. Uh, yeah, sprite's fine. We're also going to have a protected inventory item. Um, item. Now, in this case, we could choose to do this in a lot of different ways, and how you do this depends on the size of your team. Protected means that you won't be able to access this from outside uh, of, of this display class, and there are advantages to that. Um, it's a lot safer, uh, especially if your team is large, but since it's just us, and we might want to take a shortcut and directly access it from somewhere else, we're going to go ahead and make that public. Now, start and update are the same, but we're going to need to be able to prime it. Now, just as a matter of me always having the same naming convention, I make this always, I always call it prime, um, but it's up to you what you want to call it. Initialize, stuff like that is normally taken and reserved, so I just came up with prime. Then we say this.item equals item, and now we've set, now we have set this up so that our uh, inventory item item is equal to whatever we've just called it in and all we have to do now is display it so we say if text name does not equal null then text name dot text equals item dot name that uh, display name is good I have a different display name so that I can have my um, uh, in in inventory here these are the names and I might want a different display name as opposed to that so for example if you have a dagger but it's a magical dagger of plus eight and you name it dagger of Amun Ra or whatever then I want to be able to display that so instead of displaying this name I display this name which can be customized very very easily as needed without screwing up my basic categorization Another reason we say if text name does not equal null is because a lot of our different displays won't have a name. If it's in your quick bar, it's just going to be an icon. So then we say if uh, sprite, spite, sprite does not equal null, then sprite.sprite .sprite equals item.sprite. There we are. That's all we needed to do. Uh, now the downside of this is that at the moment we don't have anything to prime this. So what we're going to do is here in start we're going to say if item does not equal null then prime item. So what we're saying is that if we set this up in the inspector and hit play we want to make sure that that actually gets primed correctly and that's a valuable debug tool uh, to, to help you get everything up and running. So just to reiterate this is the display class. It's got some display links and it's got an item that it remembers how to use. If you manually create the item, then when you hit play, it's going to uh, automatically display it. Otherwise, you're going to have to call it from somewhere else, and we'll get, it to, we'll get to that later. And this will be uh, creating this display and using these display elements. Now, these display elements can be anything, and any, any size, any configuration, and that's, what the, the, um, that's where the power comes from. Let's go ahead and rename this as uh, 
uh, inventory list display uh, element. You can name these things whatever you want. After a while, my names start to get longer and longer, so maybe that's not a very good one. I don't know. Uh, but either way, we're going to go ahead and drop that new script in, and we're going to go ahead and link these up properly. Image, text, uh, and let's go ahead and pull in a dagger. And let's just see whether this works. Dagger. See? So if you were wondering how to create uh, list elements, it's this simple. This inventory list display is super uh, adaptable. Oh, I just did bronze armor. Oh, yeah. Now you can see this display class it doesn't actually know what a bronze armor is or what an amulet is, and it could just as easily be displaying castles or people or wounds or whatever. Um, but the point is that it is something where we can pass it the correct kind of thing and it will display it. And we could create another version of this. So, for example, if we decide that we would like to have uh, an inventory display which is a completely different size and uh, uh, just drag it over here somewhere and make it big like this and we can have this block here be like this and then the text can be like uh, down here and it can be like uh, you know, font size 36 uh, and uh, you know bold uh, and whatever we would like make it red and then we hit play it works fine and that is the key this display class can be used to display any UI element that needs to reference this object. And because it, ha because it can do that, we can set it up so that no matter what we need to have happen, when we click or drag or whatever, we can set it up so that it will always understand how to pass this item around. So regardless of what kind of inventory item we tell it to display and what we want to do with that item, it's going to act as a really good intermediary. It's going to tell the player this, this item here, and then the player will say, oh, well, this is on the inventory list, so if I click on it, I'll be selecting it. Or this is on the talk list, so if I click on it, I'll be trying to buy it, or whatever. Now, obviously, the next step is to drop one of these into our prefabs. Now, this is a button which can be dragged out like this. Very straightforward, very easy. I think maybe you understand the next step, which is to make these things automatically populate um, off of a list of items. Well, how long is this? It is 12 minutes? That's too long. 13 minutes? Let's go ahead and stop here. In the next episode, we will do our population and create these lists automatically.